What's up guys? Welcome back to Bible Films and Dunes. Today we're in Matthew chapter 16. Let's get started. All right, so Matthew chapter 16 starts out with the Pharisees and the Sadducees asking for signs as if Jesus didn't spend the past few, I don't know, time-wise, but all of Matthew giving them signs and wonders and working miracles in front of their eyes. And Jesus knows that they are just, they're continuing to ask for proof. These people, if they have not made their decision up that he is the son of God, then they're being hard-hearted. And so Jesus says they're not going to get a sign except for the sign of Jonah. And he mentions this before, and that's talking about um, how Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And Jesus is referring to, they don't know it yet, but we know it because we live on the other side of um, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He is talking about how he will be crucified and go into the earth for three days and three nights just like Jonah, but then he will come back just like Jonah was spit out. And so that's the sign he's talking about. Um, and then he tells the disciples. The disciples, um, they travel somewhere and they forget to bring their bread. They forget to bring food to eat. And they're like, oh, Jesus, we forgot our bread. And Jesus was like, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And we learned recently that leaven is yeast. It's the thing in bread that um, makes it rise. Um, but the disciples are like, I don't, they thought Jesus maybe didn't understand. And Jesus is thinking they're not understanding because they're worried about what they're going to eat. And he's like, why are you worried about what you're going to eat? Didn't we just feed 5,000? Weren't you there with me um, when we had five loaves and two fish? Didn't we just feed uh, 4,000 with two little <laughs> food? And he said, so why are you worried about that? I want to concentrate on the things that you should worry about and beware of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Beware of any kind of teaching that does not point us to the truth of God's word. And so that's what Jesus is saying and the disciples just, they're just hungry. <laughs> um, then Peter confesses that Jesus is the Christ. Um, Jesus is asking them, who are people saying I am? And they tell him different things. They say you're John the Baptist. They say you're Elijah. And he says, but who do you say I am? And Peter, Simon Peter says, you are Jesus. You're the son of God. You're Christ. And Jesus blesses Peter in that moment. And he tells him that he's going to build his church upon him. He's the rock that he'll build his church upon. And then we continue on and Jesus foretells he starts telling them that he's going to die um, and that this has to happen. And the disciples aren't really, I don't know if they're listening well or they're saying, oh, no, it's going to be fine. They don't know. They don't respond normally. But when Jesus tells that he's going to be killed, Peter said, uh-uh. You know, Peter takes him aside and he said, this is not going to happen to you. And Jesus says, no, don't even say that. And what they're misunderstanding what Peter's misunderstanding, um, Jesus knows that this has to happen. He has to die and, and come back to life in order to save all of us, to save Peter, to save all of us. And Peter is just thinking really in earthly terms, and he has no idea what Jesus is, is going to do for us. And then finally, there's this section, and I think we all get our takeaway from this section. It's really some important... Um, words from from Jesus and also in an important way to live. So Jax, read that last the last few verses for us about taking up your cross and following Jesus. Okay, so 24 through 26 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will find it. For what will for what will it benefit someone if he gains the whole world yet loses his life? Or, what will anyone give in exchange for his life? Okay, so what that means when it says whoever loses their life gains their life and whoever keeps their life will lose their life is so you throw away your life when you're living for yourself and you keep or you take the life when you live for God. That's right. Oh, okay. So, like, when you choose to follow Jesus, you are saying... Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. You saved me from my sins. 
and you are going to be the Lord of my life. You're going to now be the boss of who I am. So no longer will I live for Jenny, but I'm going to live each and every day for God and whatever he has for me that day to bring him honor, to bring him glory, to obey him, to point others to him. Who knows? And this verse is the foundation of who we are to be as his disciples. If, if we choose to follow Christ, that is giving up our life. And we gain everything in return. If we don't choose to follow Christ, that's keeping our life to ourselves. That's choosing not to follow him. We're going to keep on living for ourselves. And Christ Jesus says we're going to end up losing our life. That's not the best choice. And I know for myself, in my own experience... Um, this is really, after, after salvation, after choosing to follow Christ, this is a choice I have to make every single day to be a disciple for Christ, to follow him. In fact, there is a note in my bathroom. What does it say, guys? Um, Die to self. Die to self. It's super fun to wake up and see that. That's what Preacher Daddy says. But it is my reminder that I need every single day to tell me, you are not living this day for Jenny. You are living this day for Christ. So submit yourself to him every single day. I have tried, and not on purpose, but I have selfishly lived days and moments of my life letting myself be my boss, letting myself tell myself what I want to do and going with that and choosing not to do what God tells me. And I will say, I got sick of myself. I came to the end of myself. I'm not good enough for salvation. I'm not, I on my own cannot... Um, help myself. I need something bigger than me and better than me in my life to save me from my fears, from my sin, from my thoughts, all kinds of different things in my life. And I have tried that out, tried living for myself, and I have found this to be true. It is so much better to give yourself up every single day. And what I have found by living my life for Christ and choosing to follow him is he does give me life. When my life is surrounded by who he is, he gives blessings and love and peace and comfort and joy that I cannot find on my own. So this is a super important part. Um, and so we pray that you join us uh, first of all, in choosing to follow Christ as your Savior. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, as the, the person who saves you from your sin, then we pray that you come to a relationship with him. We pray for you to know him the way that we do. And then if you do have a relationship with him, if you are saved, to live your life in this way every single day saying, you know what, I'm not living my life for me today. I'm living my life for Jesus. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. We're excited about what God is teaching us in Matthew, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.